Fora TV. The world is thinking. Uh, let me take a, a, a quick break here from some of the scientific specific questions we're talking about, the, the RNA and the RNAi, and, and talk about some of the broader picture of all this. Um, question, have you received criticism for this quote-unquote interference with a natural cell's makeup? How can humans justify changing the way a natural untouched cell operates? I think anything we do changes the world. And so we can imagine a very, very strict ethical sense that we shouldn't interfere with the way anything works. Then you wouldn't take any medicines, you wouldn't change your lifestyle if you needed to because there was a disease. You wouldn't have antibiotics, you wouldn't have vaccines. I think we, as a society, we think those things are positive. We think getting rid of childhood diseases that cause child mortality as much as possible, getting rid of adult diseases. I think that is something that we have relatively common agreement on as a positive aspect for society. The question of changing the genetic makeup of humans for generations to come is a much more complicated issue and also gets into the question of whether we really know the consequences of our actions. But I think to the extent to which we, we buy into the fact that we really do want it, the world to work the way we do. If you see a child who's sick, you want to make that child healthy. I understand that England just allowed human-animal embryonic experiments. What is your opinion of this? I'm not really an expert on the, the exact experiments that were allowed there, and I don't, so I don't know the details of that. It's a, it's a question that you have to look at very carefully. I think this is a good question for discussion. What kind of regulatory oversight, government or otherwise, might be appropriate to control genetic modifications that are allowed? I imagine this is quite a hot topic these days. Yeah, it's quite a hot topic. Um, it, it again gets into this fact that we have all bought into the fact that we do agree with the, the concept that we're going to change the system to, to promote health and to, promote, to some extent to promote um, the environment being, being going forward. And so, um, but we don't want to make people sick. We need, and so there is this phenomenal federal institution of the Food and Drug Administration. And if you want to do any kind of manipulation of uh, human beings, like, like a drug trial, you have to get their approval for that. And that system, th there's been tremendous publicity about the few failures of the system. That system is phenomenally accurate and phenomenally successful in what it allows and doesn't allow. It's kept us healthy. It's allowed treatments that we all want to have out there, and it's prevented a lot of things from coming through that haven't, because there's a very high standard for if you want to prescribe a drug, a molecule, as a therapeutic, you have to meet all of these hurdles. And so that has been a phenomenal system over the years, with, of course, a few bumps in the road that are, that are, that are renowned. But I think it's worth looking at the bigger picture of it. Let me ask you this, as we move into this political season here in this country. What message, as a scientist doing the research that you're doing, would you want to put, that, put out there for all um, politicians to consider in terms of, of scientific funding and so forth? Well, I think there's two messages that have been coming out. One message, and I think are very important to bring out. One message is that there's a tremendous opportunity right now in the scientific community to provide solutions and to provide ideas that are going to benefit. And we're underutilizing that opportunity to a great extent now. We really are not supporting education enough in this society, we're not supporting research enough in the society, and we're not supporting the application of the research and the ability to apply it enough in the society. Finding out how to do that is important. The other message is that scientists will be and can be really answer, answerable to the public in terms of what we do and what we focus on. If politicians in a community, a politician is a leader, if a leader in a community comes to the scientific establishment and says, we have a problem in this community, we have, our plants are dying, we have a problem, our people are getting sick, the scientific community, the medical community should respond to that by saying, here's how we can try and deal with it. We, sh we shouldn't be in our own little ivory towers. And I think both of those messages are very important to be there. We need a two-way street of communication. And I think based on that, the opportunities for really being able to improve people's lives are really substantial. How optimistic are you based on the current political climate 
again, not one administration versus another, but in general, where things are evolving politically, that you as a scientist will continue to get the resources you need? You know, are, are we going to be able to meet the payroll next month is what I'm worried at the moment. But um, um, most of us as scientists, I should say most of us as scientists, even at re major and very well supported research universities, run our own sort of small businesses in the sense that we get grant money from the government. We write for grants and some private agencies too. We write for grants based on what we want to do. And our ability to carry out research is really based on, ability, on our ability to convince people to fund that to fund that research. It's really challenging right now because there's, partly because there's so much great science going on, but partly because the real support for research has dramatically dropped over the last few years. And I'm not confident at all. I worry about um, not only, it's sort of the, I think it's in a depression now. The recession is when your neighbor loses their grant. A depression is when you lose your grant. Mm -hmm. And so I think all of us are really worried about that in, in, a, in a rather personal way for the research that we are very invested in and how to continue that over the next few years.